In late April, linebacker Zabin Collins became just the third Tulsa Golden Hurricane to be drafted in the first round of the NFL Draft, which began in 1936. The Arizona Cardinals picking the All-American 16th overall. Now, Collins hails from Hominy, a small town in northeast Oklahoma that has a remarkable history with professional football and the National Football League. Reporter Steve Shaw travels to Osage County to share the tale of big-time pro ball in Oklahoma. With the 16th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Zayvon Collins. The meteoric rise of Zayvon Collins is quite the story. Tulsa was the only major college to offer Zaven a football scholarship when Collins, who the experts rated just a two-star prospect, graduated from high school four years ago. Where Zaven grew up maybe should have given those experts more of a clue. The guy is highly intelligent, and like I said, anything he puts his mind to, he does. Donnie Reed's son, Colton, grew up with Zaven. And you could just see from when they were kids, they were dominant in flag football. They dominated everything they did. That dominance stretched through high school when quarterback Zaven Collins and trusted receiver Colton Reed led the Hominy Bucks to the 2016 Class 1A State Football Championship. It was Hominy's seventh state football championship. But the pigskin tradition in this small town goes back a lot further and a lot deeper than that. About a hundred years ago, during an era known as the Roaring Twenties, a group of Osage tribe members formed an all-Native American semi-professional football team. They called themselves the Hominy Indians. Eventually, uh, they got to be really, really, really good. Um, you had people that were from all different tribes. Um, the best of the best. The best of the best. And so a lot of them came from the Haskell Indian School. Uh, the, first, um, the first coach of the team was actually a Pete Hauser. He was a former um, player at Haskell uh, University at the time. In Lawrence? Uh, yes. In Lawrence, yes. Kansas? Uh-huh, yeah. So a lot, of our, a lot of the players that came down here to play kind of originated in that area and then all throughout, you know, this, this part of Oklahoma. The Hominy Indians played all over the middle United States. They traveled in caravans from town to town. They would dress up in Native American attire, host bonfires, and let out menacing powwow cries on nights before games. The Hominy Indians would win 28 consecutive games. Some of that type of things they would um, acts of intimidation. Acts of intimidation, getting getting these uh, getting their bluff in on people, so to speak, you know. But they would they would do this um, this whole kind of show going into these places, and and it actually between those consecutive victories and this intimidation factor they had, they were, became known as the terrors of the Midwest. Jim Thorpe was not on the team, but uh, at one point for a stint, uh, Johnny Martin played Pepper Martin, the baseball player. He actually played. Uh, you had these guys that had very thin leather, maybe maybe shoulder pads at one time, uh, brown leather shoulder pads. They had uh, the, the very thin brown leather hats, you know, uh, or uh, helmets, I guess, as it were. Uh, but there was no real protection there. These guys were rough and tumble, and they would get out there and they would play uh, wherever they could. The Hominy Indians played most of their home games here in this area of the Osage Reservation in Hominy. But it was another game, 20 miles north in Pawhuska, the day after Christmas, 1927, when the girders of this fantastic legend were really laid. The newly crowned champions of the National Football League that year, the New York Giants, yes, those New York Giants, wanted to play. How did they convince the New York Giants to come to Pawhuska to play the Hominy Indians? The way I heard it was just kind of supposed to be like a, a, a scrimmage, you know, just to kind of see. And I think it turned into that. You know, it, it was supposed to be an, uh, just a beat down. Well, it didn't go that way. If you look at the Pusca paper from that time, it says uh, the, the how many Indians vanquish the New York Giants. I believe the score was 13 to 6. 
Eventually, the 1929 stock market crash and the Great Depression that followed ended the Hominy Indians' incredible run in 1936. The, the people that know the story are all gone now. So now it's like what you're talking about, it's just a legend, it's something you've heard about. And, but that, it goes right behind our, our state championships, you know, that, that's, that's part of it. That's kind of the beginning. And to see somebody with as much passion as Zavin has, and as Donnie said, as, as much passion in anything that he does, um, and still remain true and humble to your roots, that's where we're at, uh, I think, with the Indians as well. These, these guys went out there and they played the game for the love of the game, but they played that game remembering their history, their culture, and where they were from, and they shared that with, with well, people all over the, the United States, as far as that goes. I mean, it's big news whenever a, a small ragtag band maybe defeats the, you know, the national champions. In Osage County, Steve Shaw, The Oklahoma News Report. Steve, great story, and this note. In their heyday, some members of the Hominy Indians were paid as much as $150 per game. Real good money back in the roaring 20s.